Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are looking at a new strategy game which is coming out in about 12 days uh, on January 18th. That game is Nantucket. Uh, the game is, is sort of marketing itself as a seafaring strategy game which puts you in the shoes of a whaling captain and crew, uh, charging you with uh, sailing the high seas and hunting various types of whales during sort of the uh, early days, not early days I guess, but certainly a little bit before the uh, pinnacle of whaling in the United States. For those of you who are unfamiliar with whaling, uh, it's the practice of hunting and uh, fishing, I guess, uh, various types of whales made famous in the book Moby Dick. It was actually at one point in time in the 1850s, whaling was five, the fifth largest industry in the entire United States economy. It was a huge uh, piece of the U.S. economy. Uh, whales uh, were used, their, their, um, sort of their lard, their fats, or their oils were used in things like uh, blubber, but they were also used principally uh, for candles, if you will. The oil that you would burn in a candle is my understanding of it. Uh, there was a food aspect to it as well, uh, but it was just this really risky venture with ships out on the high seas uh, trying to hunt down often these massive creatures. Uh, that uh, certainly wasn't always peaceful or, or easy to be done. Uh, and again, was this massive part of the U.S. economy and uh, today is, is largely uh, prohibited in most countries. Uh, in fact, whales were, you know, substantially reduced. There used to be tens and tens of thousands of whales that were very common. Uh, and now, unfortunately, many whale species are, uh, you know, very, not near extinction, but certainly very rare uh, the way they used to be. At one point in time, I think I read something that said there were 50,000 whales that were being killed per year. And I mean, these are not small fish where there's trillions or millions of them in the in the, in the seas. These are, uh, in many cases, very large uh, creatures. So, you know, that was a large part of the world economy. That was a large part of the U.S. economy uh, for a long time. And this game takes you into those uh, into those waters and, and puts you in charge of a, a crew hunting these majestic creatures. So again, without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Nantucket. We're going to go ahead and start a new game. This is going to be very much a first look of the game. I've played about 20 minutes of it to get some of the basic controls under, under my feet. Uh, I, again, in my 20 minutes, I managed to cause my crew to starve at sea, and we all died. So it's a little bit of a tricky game, but we'll figure this out here together. Uh, we're going to be naming our captain. Um, what should we name him? I guess we'll just go with THG. That's nice and simple. And I'm going to go ahead and give my, my captain the trait of uh, sailing, so he'll be a good sailor. We're going to go ahead and choose our trait, which allows us to get, you know, what additional piece are we? Are we smart? Are we strong? Are we an old sea dog? Are we healthy? Uh, or are we open-minded? If we click on it, we can see open-minded gives you one additional XP gained per day of navigation. Uh, healthy gives you one HP per level. Sea dog gives you a more rapidly replenishing uh, hit point during a navigation. Uh, strong gives you bonuses in combat. And smart gives you uh, plus one to spend in attributes. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and be smart, and we're going to be a sailor. Uh, we've got that extra point to spend in our attributes, which we're going to go ahead and apply to... Do we want to do science? I don't really know what science does. Science are the investigators of the natural world. Their curiosity and competence can unlock unknown knowledge about the sea, and above all else, save lives on your ship. Uh, crafting allows us to uh, be expert artisans specializing in dealing with all practical errands of a ship. Their hands are surely the dirtiest and most useful at sea. Sailing, as we've already said, uh, valiant explorers who spend their lives at sea, no matter is a majestic vessel, a whaleboat, or a simple board, they know how to keep afloat come rain or shine. And then hunting, obviously, is the ability to effectively hunt other whales. Or not other whales, hunt whales. So I think we'll use that trait. We're not going to do the tutorial. We're just going to go ahead and jump into the, the regular game. Um, the tutorial kind of takes place on Captain Ahab's ship uh, from Moby Dick and uh, involves some really basic activities, which I think I can talk through on my own. Uh, it's a pretty quick tutorial. And if you can't see anything, I'm looking at my uh, my stream right now, and I do show the images coming through, guys. Let me know if 
if there's any issues with the actual uh, video coming through, but uh, what I'm looking at says that the game is live, and I, I can see a copy of the stream coming through live as well, so let me know if there's any issues there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and hit play. We've got a whale boat here. Drink ye harpooners, drink and swear, ye men that whale boat's bow. Death to Moby Dick. God hunt us all if we do not hunt Moby Dick to his death. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. I was cursed. Twice. By the Lord for my blasphemous promise to hunt Moby Dick, and by Ahab for surviving the Pequod and its sons swallowed by the sea. I was craving to conquer my spot in heaven by striking my iron in Moby Dick's heart. So I headed back to Nantucket, looking for a new ship and wealth-seeking sailors. Okay, so the game appears to take place after the sinking of the Pequod. I assume uh, Captain Ahab and all the crew died, and you're the one surviving individual. I, I suppose that makes you Ishmael, the only person who survives in the book Moby Dick. Spoiler alert, that book was written over 100 years ago. With that being said here, this is the basic port screen. Uh, kind of neat, actually, because I was in Nantucket this fall for the first time ever. It's gorgeous. I highly recommend going there if you get the chance. This is the pier where the ships come up and dock. Um, in modern days, this is where the fast ferry comes in. You come off, and there's all sorts of shops and whatnot all along the way. This is your basic port screen. This will be the same in any port you go to. Nantucket is not the only port that you can go to. Uh, Nantucket, by the way, is a small island off Cape Cod, uh, similar to Martha's Vineyard, but it was sort of the harbor of choice for quite a long time during the whaling years of America's uh, past. Uh, I believe New Bedford, Massachusetts really became the capital actually around this time in terms of whaling, uh, but up until this point, really Nantucket was uh, the preeminent whaling port. Um, let's see here. So we've got a bunch of different things we can click on. We've got a general store. We've got the sort of ship screen. We've got the tavern, and we've got the newspaper. So let's go ahead and click on the newspaper first. You can see here George IV is the new king of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The Portuguese forces defeat Uruguayan independence in Terra Mercado. And the Russian sloop Vostok claims to have sighted the ice sheet of Terra Australis. Okay. You can also see here that there are jobs that you can pick up within the port. And they give you certain bonuses like additional money or additional prestige if you succeed in those. We'll come back to that later. Um, if we go to the port screen here, the shipwright, this is where you can buy new ships. So right now we have the Melville, uh, which is a rotten sloop. Uh, you've got other options here, so you can scroll through. You've got a rotten cutter you could purchase, a rotten brig, schooner, three different ships here that you start off that you could theoretically buy, although we don't have any money to buy any of these. And you can see here, to replace our existing ship would cost several hundred dollars. Um, I suppose, I don't even know, no, I've actually, sorry, several thousand dollars, 5,700 there uh, for the Lydia, which is a rotten schooner, and more for the brig uh, or brigantine. Um... Yeah, so not, not something we can afford right now. Uh, we start with a rotten sloop, which has certain ship technologies here. These are all things that we'll probably touch on as we get later into the game. Uh, there's no powder, which assume you know, there's no cannons on the boat. Uh, your harpoon technology starts out as poor. Uh, you can research better harpoon technology. It'll cost you $200 and take 90 days. Uh, you can research better lenses, which allows you to spot uh, you know, more ships and things like that, or more uh, whales and things like that. Uh, but right now we're going to hold off on any of that, because frankly all we have is $1,000, and we're going to need a lot of that to get us out to sea. So this is our, our ship here. You can see we have, let's see, what does it tell me about what we have anyway? 
Everything's just kind of basic at the moment. Our cargo hold is up to 64 tons. Hit points 32, speed 6 knots, max crew 3, whale boats 1, small size ship, and it's, it's a sloop. So that's what it is, really just sort of the entry level vessel. Now, if we go into the tavern here, this is where we're gonna hire our whaling crew. We have ourselves THG. We can hire up to three crew members uh, for our vessel. So you can hire a cabin boy, which I'm not quite sure what cabin boys do. Uh, you can hire hunters. Uh, these are the individuals who are uh, more effective at actually, you know, spearing a whale with a harpoon. You can hire sailors, which obviously are effective at managing the ship at sea. Uh, craftsmen, which can help repair things or construct things and scientists, which I don't know if that just means they're like good at healing people or what, like are these the uh, the Aubrey, or are these the Stephen Martins of the whaling world? That I'm not sure of, um, but let's go ahead. We're gonna get a hunter first. You can see here we have four prestige right now, which is kind of your, your capital, your ability to purchase a individual here. So for example, we have four prestige. We could hire Rudolph, but then we wouldn't be able to hire anybody else because they all cost money, unless it was just a cabin boy. So we're going to go ahead and actually hire Jim, the hunter, Jim. He's one prestige cost, 13 hit points, no bonuses. We'll hire him. You'll see our prestige of four. Uh, we'll use one of that up, so we're down to three available prestige. We'll move over to sailors. I'm going to hire one sailor, Jacob. Uh, and then I think we'll hire one craftsman, uh, which will be... Let's... Do we want to hire John? We could hire, we could hire Guy, actually. Uh, which gives us, we use all our prestige up. We have three crew members. Uh, our most effective is Guy, who's a plus two hull recovery per day. So obviously keeping us afloat is an important thing. Uh, says morale, 90, negative 99. Uh, I don't know if that means, maybe that's just a dash and we're at 99 morale. So that, that would make more sense. Um, okay, so we've hired all those people. Now let's go and purchase our stores, which we'll need to be able to stay at sea. So there's some basic items you need to purchase in order to be able to sail around the world. For example, you need water. Obviously, you don't want your, sol your not soldiers, you don't want your sailors to be dehydrated. Uh, you don't want to run out of food because then you'll starve. You don't want to run out of grog because as anybody who knows anything about the age of sail at sea, uh, you need to have your sailors good and toasty with nice grog out at sea. And if you don't, then well, they're going to be really pissed off and might mutiny on you. And then you need wood to repair things in the ship and avoid the ship basically falling apart at sea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and buy, uh, I don't know what we want to buy, maybe 10 food. You can see here, it'll 10 food would be good for 126 days at sea. Uh, or sorry, that's water. Uh, we can buy five barrels of, uh, of food, which would also be good for 126 days. So for every barrel, of, uh, every two barrels of water, you need one barrel of food for the same amount of time. You can go ahead and purchase some grog. Three grog is enough to keep us at sea for about four months. And then we can go ahead and buy some wood. Uh, we'll go ahead and buy, maybe we'll buy five wood, which will, well, actually let's buy six. It'll allow us to stay at sea for 120 days. So right now we've purchased 24 barrels or tons worth of, uh, actually I guess it's barrel space, 24 barrels worth of water, food, grog, and wood. It'll allow us to be at sea up to 120 days uh, without any problems. We've also used half of our money, so we've used about $490 purchasing all of those items and preparing our ships for sea. Now, frankly, if we go back to the uh, ship screen, you know, we've got a little bit of extra money. We could spend some of that on researching better lenses, better harpoons. Uh, we don't have these technologies unlocked for stoves, surgical kits, triworks, uh, but we do have shelving, which will allow us to have more cargo space. Uh, we could have sails, which will make us faster. Uh, we could uh, we'll get hammocks, which would make, uh, I guess, plus one health point restored per day. So those are all the different things we could spend a little bit of money on, spend a little time on. I'm actually going to go ahead and purchase better harpoons, uh, which will take 90 days. The research of the harpoon technology has started. It'll take 90 days to complete. Then you can come back here to finalize the research and upgrade the related compartment. Note that the technology level is not lost when buying a new ship, so that's good. That means that anything we research here will carry over to the next vessel. Uh, and then I'm also going to go ahead and... Not all requirements are met. I guess we can only research one thing per day because we do have enough money uh, to research more. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit cancel there. Let's go back to the newspaper and take on a job. 
Um, there are different quests and things like that that you want to accomplish. It's kind of a story-based ca uh, campaign. We'll get to that in a moment, but just in the interest of saving time, I'm going to go ahead and accept the quest that allows me to discover a new whaling area. That'll give me $200 if we succeed. And then I'm also going to accept the quest of Unveil the Clara's Destiny. The Clara was declared lost days ago, and her destiny is shrouded in mystery, so another ship or whaling vessel. She was traveling from Nantucket to Koryarka, but she never reached her destination. Explore the route that she took to locate the ship and her crew. This is anywhere between 1 to 99 days away. We have 120 days worth of food, so hopefully that's enough for us. If we succeed, we get $250. We also get plus one prestige. I mentioned prestige earlier. It's the kind of thing that allows you to hire better whale crews. Uh, it's also sort of the way you progress along the campaign here. So with all of that being said, I think we're done here in port. It's January 1st of 1820. Let's go ahead and sail away. Sail away with me into the night. Yeah, Billy, I'm sure that some of my crew members are, are faulty. You know, we, we may have picked up some bad traits from some of the people that we uh, brought our crew uh, into our ship. But frankly, it's also the only crew members we could afford with the prestige level that, that it was. So if we go down here and click on quest update, you can see here we have two minor quests. Those are the quests that we took up in the actual port. Discover a new whaling area and unveil the Clara's destiny. Our main quest is the uh, to rise from the ranks. So our main objective is if you want other captains to share rumors with you about Moby Dick, you have to become a respected whaler. That means you need a prestige level of 25. Look for jobs in the cities or hunt whales around the world. So again, these two jobs will help us earn money. One of them will help us earn some prestige toward rising up to a 25 prestige level. Currently, we have a prestige of four. So we've got a ways to go before we're actually going to be able to do anything. Now, this is the actual map of the world. Um, let's see here. Oh. Uh, we can move around here and see all the different you know parts of the world. This kind of this old timey looking map. These little arrows on the map represent the direction the trade winds are blowing. So if we're sailing you know left to right, where the arrows pointing left to right, you get bonuses in speed. If you're trying to sail right to left against the wind, then you will of course you know have reduced speed because you'll be trying to beat against. Uh, the trade ones. It's kind of cool here when you got on to, uh, is, it, is it Cape Horn, is it? Or is that, is that, I can't remember if Cape Horn is where Cape Town is or uh, if it's where South America is. But you can see here the wind's clearly blowing left to right, so that idea of going uh, west into the Pacific is a very challenging uh, activity and, and historically was very rough and difficult to do. It was far easier to travel around the Cape in Africa and then sail uh, that way. You can see the vessel that we're looking for, the Korerka, is located all the way down here in New Zealand. Um, I think that's New Zealand. Interestingly, that Australia, or uh, not Australia. Uh, actually, yeah, Australia isn't even on the map of the game, which is weird. Uh, but uh, you can see here they're down here. Uh, our other whaling objective is probably up here uh, in Baffin Bay. That's our other objective here. I don't know if we have a time limit on when we can... Do this it doesn't look like we have a time limit on these quests so I guess we can just kind of get going uh, you can see here on the right side of the screen it tells you your speed uh, it tells you the hull so are you at hundred percent how many hit points do you have it tells you the average crew morale which is one for everybody so very low crew morale current um, number of barrels so we've got 40 excess barrels that we can use uh, it is a rotten quality ship so 20% reduction in uh, the barrel space, normally you start with up to 80 with a sloop, but because it's a uh, basically an old ship that's starting to kind of fall apart, it's been in sea for too long, uh, you get a reduced amount of quality there. Uh, you no Total number of barrels of blubber, which you can retrieve from whales when you uh, hunt them. Uh, barrels of oil, likewise you get that from, uh, from whales. Uh, food, water, grog, and wood. Uh, we can go ahead and expand this here, and we can see here our crew... Uh, where they're, you know, all the different uh, things that we have. So Guy is currently on the crow's nest. He's a level two. Uh, the crow's nest itself is a level one. Uh, the quarter deck uh, has Jim, the whaler, at the quarter deck. We've got uh, Jacob in the hold. I would rather have Jacob in the quarter deck because he's a sailor, so he should be on the tiller, I would think. Um, we'll go ahead and put... What is this down here? The hold? Why is Jim in the hold? And we're in the forecastle. Huh. Doesn't look like I can put... Anyway, I don't know why we're uh, by... Uh, anyway, I'll put him on the quarterdeck. Um, 
You know, Clan, if it's it's funny you say that it's it's hilarious that the ship is it's funny that it's considered rotten, but I was actually doing a little bit of researching on whaling vessels, and that was a comment that it said basically you had ten to fifteen years of a vessel at sea in these types of conditions before the ship would literally start to rot. So when it says that the ship is rotten, um, it's not entirely inaccurate. Um, okay, and by the way, we can click on our different crew members here and get different, we can see their traits down here. So for example, Jacob is diligent, which gives him plus one working attributes. That's actually a pretty positive trait for someone who's only a level one. Uh, Guy has some really negative traits. He's a slop eater, which means he affects uh, negative 100% morale effect of the food. And he is closed minded, which means he gets less experience per day of navigation. Jim has a positive trait over here. He's a, a gourmet. Uh, which means that he gets uh, additional uh, morale for food. So it seems like really the only... Is that the only bad apple in here? The only bad apple I can see uh, is uh, is Guy, who we may want to consider replacing at some point. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and just get, get sailing here without too much uh, kind of walking around. Or not walking around, but just sort of um, messing around. Let's go up here and go to Baffin Bay and discover the uh, the whaling location here. All right, so we're gonna sail north to Nantucket. You can see here we're kind of going with the wind. A lot of water in the hold, small crew, some water barrels have sat untouched for weeks. Some smell funny and the water looks putrid. All right, well, let's check them. All right, we just lost four barrels of water uh, due to putrefaction. Uh, again, random event uh, saying that the uh, water went bad. We're sailing to leeward, so we're getting negative 10. I guess I could be more effective in sailing along the, the line of the wind here. You can see here, we're, now we're getting this bonus of the wind because we're sailing with it, which makes us move more quickly. I assume this is a time limit we've got until we're on schedule to arrive. We're again now sailing against the wind. We're one day behind schedule, two days behind schedule. Basically making, making no progress right now with the wind the way it is. I don't know if being late affects what we get paid out or not. Uh, working shoulder to shoulder with some of your men, you come to appreciate his work ethic so much that you unintentionally start copying his attitude and way of thinking when dealing with some of the ship's errands. So we can get an 80% trait of diligent or 20% trait of lazy, or we can choose to do nothing and take no risk. Let's try and see if we can become diligent. Yes! We get the diligent trait, which makes us better. It's a positive trait. Um, so the captain just got a trait, which will let him assign a working skill point. So we'll go to that, and now we can assign one more skill point here, hopefully to sailing, because I feel like we need to be faster. Come on. Get to the darn area. We need some freaking winds. Not even moving. Finn Ahoy, your lookout yells a spot at a fin in the distance. Maybe the whale sighting rumors about this area were true. Okay, so we'll lower the whale boats. Uh, looks like you've discovered a new whaling area, but your presence made the creatures nervous. You order your men to prepare to fight. Okay, so this is the deployment or the fishing area. Victory conditions kill all the enemies present on the combat area. We have four crew members that we can put into these whaling boats. Uh, certainly, we're going to go ahead and assign Jim, who's our hunter. Uh, and then I think we'll just auto-assign from there, so it looks like Jacob and Guy will be the other guys in the boat. We will stay on the main ship, and we'll go ahead and continue here. So, three people in the whale boat, round one. Here we're hunting a narwhal. Um, so we've got, I guess we just roll dice here. And you can see here, smooth rowing is one of the traits which occurs. Should have switched over to hunting. Oh no! THG's bleeding! Cruise guides don't work. Let's switch all of these over to their hunting traits. Go ahead and roll. So we've got a strike. We can go ahead and use that strike against the narwhal. We hit it with seven X or seven hit points and killed the, the narwhal. So we succeeded in hunting our first whale. 
Uh, our own character uh, suffered a wound and lost some hit points, but we retained two blubber and one food from the whale. Uh, so that's uh, the cargo that we, we gained. And now we can go ahead. I think we accomplished our objective there. Yep, we did. So we can go ahead and uh, start the Clara uh, trait or Clara objective, if you will. Let's see here. I'm not sure the best way to get down there. I suppose we just go this way. Just literally turn around. And you can see our character is healing himself uh, now that he's no longer at sea. For to take a mother sea <laughs> on a western ocean passage, there's none that can compare. <laughs> and the smartest ship, and again, we're sailing against the wind, so this is, is lovely and slow. I'm gonna speed time up. And the wind is on the quarter. All right, so we got through that, that bad wind, we're moving much more quickly now. And then we're going to go ahead and sail south as soon as we get on track to start figuring out where the... Oh, there we go. You can clearly hear broadsiding sounds coming from not far away. Looking at the horizon with your spyglass, you see a pirate ship battling the ship you were looking for. They have little chance of survival if you do not do something to help them. Okay, so we could go board the pirate ship. We don't have cannons, so we can't shoot them. Um, and we don't have firearms, so we can't... We don't have a headshot skill, and we don't have cannons. So the only option we have is to try and board the pirates, or we can sail away. So let's try and board the pirates and see what happens here. So apparently you can fight other ships as well as whales. That's interesting. Um, I think we're going to auto-assign here. We've got THG, Guy, and Jim. We're going to go ahead and uh, have everybody's traits exposed here. We'll go ahead and continue. There's three enemy pirates. These all have pretty good health hit points. Ugh. Hope I don't get my crew killed right away. Um, random human gets a state bleeding, which is apparently me. So I think I just am gonna roll, see what happens. Clumsy strike. Alright, so we, we wounded this pirate, but again, it wasn't a great strike. So you can see here, Jim just lost five hit points. And I lost two because I'm bleeding. And now I'm stunned. Why is it always me? It's always random against me. Um, so we only get two. Oh, no! All right, so we're working down one of the enemy pirates. Oh god, I'm gonna get killed. What the frick? They have guns! Uh, this is gonna turn out bad, isn't it? Do I even have the option to run? I can surrender. It doesn't look like I have the option to run. Uh... What happened? Do you think they kill us if we surrender? What do you guys think? Should we surrender or should we fight it out? Because it seems almost certain that I'm going to die and that Jim's going to die. We might kill one of them. So let's see what happens if we surrender. Or we can retreat. You drop your weapon and order your men to follow suit. The pirates plunder your ship. Great. So negative one prestige, negative $232, negative three morale for two of the guys. But we're still alive. Um, we lose one of our blubber, one of our grog, or one of our water, none of our oil. We didn't have any oil. None of our grog, two of our wood. All right. Well, that was a failure. So we figured out the Clara's destiny. Um, I guess we'll just return to Nantucket then at this point. And we'll see what happens here. So enter the harbor. A new issue of the newspaper is available. Go in, in here as well. Before we look at that, we'll go ahead and collect our reward of $200 for the whaling area and get a reward for un uncovering the Clara's destiny. Uh, plus one prestige also gives us back that prestige we lost in that fight there. So prestige level is actually up to five now. 
Um, we got the one for hunting the whale. We lost the one for fighting the pirates and losing, and we got the one for winning that battle. So we're overall netted plus one. Um, means we could have a slightly better crew, but there's no whale hunt. There's no hunters that have a prestige of two. Suppose there might be a sign. No, there isn't. So there's nothing we can really do with that extra prestige right now. Uh, if we go into the general store, we have seven hundred fifty dollars. We need to buy more water, so we'll buy. Let's buy 15 of them. Go ahead and buy 10 water. 6 grog. 7 wood. So we've got 38... Actually, one more wood. We've got enough wood or food or everything else to be at sea for 5 months now. We have $222 left. If we go to the newspaper, we can see the Irish captain Edward Bramsfield lands in the main uh, mainland of Terra Austlis. Uh, we exposed a plot to murder the cabinet of the United Kingdom, or not we, and the Chilean independence forces captured the city of, of Alvida. Uh, in terms of jobs, there's nothing. Nothing for us to do right now. All the jobs here in Nantucket uh, have been accomplished, so I suppose the only other thing there is to do there is to uh, sail away. I all right, everybody, and that's going to conclude this, the first part of my look at Nantucket, a new strategy game that puts you in the shoes of a whaling crew and, uh, well, whaling captain in your attempt to avenge your uh, crew of the Pequot, uh, which we, you were a member of in the book Moby Dick. Again, this is all taking place after the book Moby Dick. Uh, this was all taken from a live stream, as I'm sure you could tell from my commenting uh, from a couple of days ago, actually just yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and chop this up. The stream is over two hours long, and I'm going to turn this into a Let's Play. So this is really just my first look at this game, which comes out again on January 18th. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave your thoughts below. Uh, but until next time, uh, the next part of this series will come up tomorrow. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.